Welcome back to the Week in Review. Many passers-by on the Brian Laura promenade in Port of Spain did a double take on Tuesday as they spotted someone who looked like U.S. President Barack Obama. Yes, oh! thank you. How are you doing? <laughs> Did I just say? Yes. He's so handsome. That's Obama in person, isn't he? <laughs> and I was in New York for six years and I never met him. The airs are definitely smaller, but Reggie Brown certainly looks the part. And after years of practice, he also puts on a convincing Barack Obama impersonation. Many citizens along the Brian Lara promenade did a double take. His stark resemblance to the 44th President of the United States presented Brown with the start of a lucrative career in show business. He has his own political comedy show on Fox and starred in Hollywood's first feature film about Obama's election. And Brown is enjoying every bit of it. People just stop and stare. Cars stop in the middle of the street. Traffic's piling up. You know, it's just an amazing welcome. He is known as the leading Barack Obama impersonator. He told CNC3 News that even before Barack Obama announced his bid to become president, people began recognizing the resemblance. And he has no problem being mistaken for a man like President Obama. Oh, I love it. There's nothing better in the world for me. Yeah, there really isn't because as a man, I respect him. Um, as a politician, I respect him and what he's trying to do, and uh, honestly, I wish that everyone could experience what I'm going through because it is such an amazing ride. And I've had the most fun in the past two years that I've had in my entire life. Brown is in Trinidad for a six-series comedy show. And finally tonight, a look back at Carnival 2011. Carnival 2011 will be remembered for the big controversies, the big money, and the links between the two. At Chutney Soccer Finals, Ricky Jai was the first of the $2 million winners singing White Oak and Water. Moments later, the runner-up, Ravi B, would call on the crowd to pelt something if they disagreed with the results. The crowd obliged. And Ravi B later apologized amid strong criticism all around. There was big money in Pan too, $2 million, and with it, big controversy. BP Renegades complained to the court after the band failed to qualify for the Panorama Finals that DJ music behind the stands during the semi-finals affected their performance. The crowd did not accept their claim and attempts to stop the Panorama failed. Neil Massey Trinidad All-Stars winning the competition on Carnival Saturday. The Soka Monarch II, a big prize of $2 million, and Marshall Montana threw his hand rain for the first time in 15 years, telling the media he wanted to raise the bar and that he meant to take advantage of his high standard in Soka. He would face tough competition from Neil Iwood George, Fair and Lyons Alvarez and her husband, Bungie Garlin, and a barrage of criticism before and during the show. So stupid, this boy just look inside the stadium. He feel he went by the calling somebody else for champion. Now the real boo, the crowd nearly fell too. Now is the time to go and get Alan Ramlock out to help you. But Montana would win the competition and the $2 million prize with advantage after answering back his critics. Something I agree in life. A man must always support his wife. But like Bunchy don't know what to do with Fayan. It's like he is the woman and she is the man. There were boos from the crowd at the end of the show, many arguing that the real winner was Iwa George. Few argued, however, with Kester Fintala's winning composition, what less in the groovy category, although Benjai's second place Trini was a good alternative. Dimash Granite, no big money and very minor controversy in the finals of the King and Queen's competition. There was no dispute over the Clare winners, Wayne Madre's Pacific Tsunami as King and Pierlo Marchand's The Jewel Chandelier as Queen, but Gail McConnell suffered a setback as her costume broke after being caught in the wires associated with a major piece of television broadcast equipment. Another big $2 million at stake in the Calypso Monarch competition. No controversy here though, as Karina Ashes, be careful what you ask for, and Uncle Jack stole the show. No big money for the road march and no big controversy either. After all, Advantage played almost four times its closest competitor, Iowa George's Come To Me. And who could argue with the fifth consecutive Band of the Year winner, Brian McFarlane's Humanity, Circle of Life, although it was the lack of big money here that created the controversy. I don't think it should be two million. I think two million is a bit ridiculous. But maybe it could have been a million dollars. And what happened to us? 
all the work and the time and the effort and, and, the, and that goes into mass and we get 300 or 350 thousand dollars there was also no controversy when Ivan Kalicharan won the Band of the Year in South Trinidad also for the fifth consecutive time with his portrayal of Colors of Light. All in all, big money caused a big controversy, yes, but there was one part of the carnival that got unanimous approval and created no controversy at all, and it was in fact the area to which the biggest money was allocated, the Savannah Stage. And on Carnival Monday and Tuesday, masqueraders certainly took advantage of it. Well, that's how we end this week's Weekend Review. I'm Samson Anton. Have a good evening. Trinidad Week in Review is brought to you by CIN, your window to the Caribbean.